some HTML on the channel. Um, we're going to go through the introduction course, the first chapter in uh, web development. Uh, we're going to go through all of these. It will not take as long as it seems. Uh, I've already done this exercise, uh, this chapter, so it's going to be um, pretty, pretty uh, standard, I think. Um, shouldn't be too complicated, but I figured it'd be cool to learn a little bit of this. You might find it interesting, and if you don't find it interesting, then well, you'll find it boring, which will help you fall asleep, so it's a win-win no matter how you look at it. Um, over here on the right side of the screen is where you will see the web page being developed. My webcam is going to be around here, so it's going to block a little bit. I will try to uh, work with uh, with what we have. There's limited space. I wanted to put my face here, but it's blocking a little bit. So we'll try to I'll try to show you guys the web page once it's finished, so you can see what it look like looks like. But the most important thing is the code here and the information here, which I will be reading for your relaxation. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's begin. I figured this would be cool because I. Uh, I work in email marketing, and HTML is part of the job, believe it or not. I don't have to be uh, an expert in it, but it does help with crafting emails because emails use HTML and CSS. Um, and uh, I just think it's cool to learn, you know. Um, it's helpful for anyone. It really does increase your employability and uh, helps you make more money in the long run. And uh, it's just cool to learn. Um, cool to have this knowledge because it is what makes you know the internet the internet going to different web pages and such it's what makes a website a website um, so we're going to be building a web page about a bear for today in this lesson but before we do that let's just start with the basics an introduction to HTML um, so what exactly is HTML HTML provides structure to the content appearing on a website, uh, such as images, text, or videos. Right-click on any page on the internet, choose Inspect, and you'll see HTML in a panel of your screen. Um, it stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Markup Language is a computer language that defines the structure and presentation of raw text. Um, in HTML, the computer can interpret raw text that is wrapped in HTML elements. Hypertext is text displayed on a computer or a device that provides access to other text through links, um, also known as hyperlinks. You probably clicked on a couple of hyperlinks on your way to this Codecademy course. Well, you probably clicked on a couple of links on your way to my video, so same thing, really. Um, learning HTML is going to be the first step in creating websites, but even a bit of knowledge can help you inject code snippets into uh, newsletters, blogs, or website templates. As you continue learning, you can layer HTML with CSS and JavaScript to create more visually uh, compelling uh, and dynamic websites. But for now, we're going to just focus on how to add and modify basic content on a page, like text, images, and videos. Um, and so that's what we're going to do today. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me just take a sip of water really quick. My throat is dry. Okay, let's continue. So uh, I'm going to go through the lesson, and you guys can feel free to follow along, or you can just, you know, knock out if you wish. This is a, you know, multi-purpose video. You can learn and relax, or you can just fall asleep out of boredom. Either is fine for me. Um, so, in the code editor to the right, type your name in between H1 and H1, then press run. So, basically what these are, just so that you guys know, so we're just going to type our name here, is this is a heading. This is going to be the heading of a page. And uh, this is called the tag, and this is opening tag, and this is the closing tag. You always have to have this here to close the tag out. Um, and as you can see here, it displays my name as the title of the page, or the heading of the page, rather. Simple, easy, um, self-explanatory. Let's move on. So, this right here, as I just said, this is the tag, the opening tag, and this is the closing tag, right? Um, this is the content that goes inside of the tag, and this is the element, which is basically everything in between, um, that makes up the... the the entire structure. Um, this stands for paragraph, by the way. So it's like a paragraph element um, that we're working with here in this specific instance. But um, they dive deeper over here. So in 
HTML, uh, HTML anatomy is composed of elements. These element structures uh, structure the web page and define its content. Let's take a look at how they're written. Uh, the diagram to the right displays an HTML paragraph element as we can see. The paragraph element is made of, of an opening tag, which is the paragraph tag in this situation, the content, hello world text, and a closing tag. A tag and the content between it is called an HTML element. These are many tags that we use uh, to organize and display text and other types of content, like images. Um, let's quickly review each part of the element pictured. So, the HTML element, or simply element, is a unit of content in an HTML document formed by HTML tags and the text or media it contains. Um, HTML tags, the element name, surrounded by an opening like the little bracket here and closing angle brackets. An opening tag is the first HTML tag used to start an HTML element. The tag type is surrounded by opening and closing angle brackets. Content, the information that's contained between the opening and closing tags of an HTML element. Uh, the closing tag is the second HTML tag used to end an HTML element. Closing tags have a forward slash inside of them directly after the left angle brackets. Simple. Um, and I've already done this lesson before, as I mentioned, so I'm just going to reset the code here so we can do it from scratch. There we go. Okay, so one of the key HTML elements we use to build a web page is the body element. Only content inside the opening and closing body tags can be displayed to the screen. Here's what opening and closing body tags look like. So we've got body and we've got a body with the closing bracket again. Um, forward slash. Once the file has a body, many different types of content, including text, images, and buttons, can be added to the body. So, here we are. This is an example. And now they want us to add a body to your web page using the body element. So, it's fairly straightforward here. I'm just going to add body. And we're also going to add body with a closing tag. And then we're going to run it. Obviously, it's going to display nothing because we have no content. Add the following code between your opening and closing body tags. Paragraph life is very short and uh, what we have to do must be done in the now. So we're going to put that in there. And uh, we're going to close that. And to save us time, I'm just going to copy and paste the code here. So I'm going to grab this, copy it, and I'm going to paste it right here. Uh, let me do it manually there. Okay. And so now we have that between the paragraph. And when we click run, we will see it displayed on the page here, as you can see. So, um, relatively simple stuff so far. Um, and there is, you know, there's some things about indentation to consider, which is why I moved it right here, and nesting and such, but I think they're going to dive into that later, so I'm not going to talk too much about it, but so far, so good. Let's go on to the next page. Let me uh, reset the code here. Okay, good. So, um, the HTML, HTML is organized as a collection of family tree relationships. As you saw in the last exercise, we place the uh, paragraph tags within the body tags. When an element is contained inside another element, it is considered the child of that element. The child element is said to be nested inside of the parent element. So in this example above, the P element is nested inside the body element. Um, the P element is considered a child of the body element. And the body element is considered the parent. You can also see that we've added two spaces of indentation using the space bar for better readability. Since there can be multiple levels of nesting, this analogy can be extended to grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and beyond. The relationship between elements and their ancestor and descendant elements is known as a hierarchy. Let's consider a more complicated example that uses some new tags. So here we have the body tag. Um, the body element is the parent of the div element. Otherwise, stands also stands for divider. Um, both the H1 and the P elements are children of the div element, as we see here, right? Because they're nested inside with two spaces. And they would be 
grandchildren of the body, and they would be children of the div. Makes sense so far. Um, understanding the HTML hierarchy is important because children elements can inherit behavior and styling from the parent elements. You'll learn more about web page hierarchy when you start digging into CSS. Um, add the paragraph below as a child of the div element. So we've got div over here. So we're just going to add a paragraph element here. We're going to copy this. And we're going to paste it here. And uh, I have to hit control V here. Okay. So it's indented. It's a child of div. And um, that should be it. There we go. And as you can see, it's displayed over here as well. Um, and let's go to the next page. Set the code here. Do, 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 do. As you can see, we're making quick progress. We're already on 5 of 16, so it doesn't take too long to, to get this down. If you, um, you know, this website is free, by the way. I have the pro membership because I, I'm i committed to studying uh, and learning this. I spend about two hours a day on this um, during the week when I can. Um, but you can use this for free, it doesn't cost any money. Um, it's limited in what you can do in the free version, but um, still helpful if you're just dabbling or not sure if you want to learn or not. Headings in HTML are similar to headings in other types of media. For example, in newspapers, large headings are typically used to capture a reader's attention. Other times, headings are used to describe content, like the title of a movie or an educational article. HTML follows a similar pattern in HTML. There are six different headings or heading elements. Headings can be used for a variety of purposes like titling, sections, articles, or other forms of content. The following is the list of heading elements available in HTML. They are ordered from largest to smallest in size. H1, which is used for main headings. All other smaller headings are used for subheadings. Then you've got H2 through H6. There is no H7 or H8 or H9 as I understand it. The following example code uses a headline intended to capture a reader's attention. It uses the largest heading available, the main heading element. Breaking news. So, now that we know how to structure the HTML elements, uh, let's spend some uh, the rest of the lesson building an informational website about bears. Um, using some of the most common elements. We've put some elements in to get you started, but you'll write the rest of the page on your own. Below the H3 heading that says Features, right here. Add an H2 heading that says Habitat. So I'm going to add an H2 element here that says Habitat. And we're going to close it. And uh, I don't think that they want us to nest it, so we're just going to leave it as is. And we're going to click Run. And as you can see, it's displayed. And it looks like you can see most of the page too underneath my webcam, so we're okay. Um, okay. So below habitat, the habitat heading, add an H3 heading that says countries with large brown bear populations. So we're just going to go right here, and we're going to put H3, and we're going to say countries with large brown bear populations, and we're going to close it. Simple. Um, I don't think they want us to nest it. They're not really saying it, but if you want to nest it, you would just two spaces, and that would indicate that this is part of this, but it doesn't seem to be the case, so we're going to put it back to its original. Um, and, you know, that does not affect how it looks like on the page, by the way. That's just for your own readability. So when you go into the HTML, you can easily read it, and it's not complicated. You'd be surprised how often um, web developers just create a, a cluster of HTML code that looks like trash, and you can't read any of it. Um, but yeah, on the next line, add one more H3 heading that says countries with small brown bear populations. So here we are, H3, and we're going to nest it here because it's all nested underneath the body. So H3, and we're going to say countries with small brown bear populations. And we're going to close it. Easy squeezy. Lemon peasy. Let's run that there. And everything is good so far, as we see there. Um, finally, on the next line, add an H2 element that says media. So we're going to hit that. We're going to put media, close it. I can type really fast.
fast, but when it comes to the keys all the way on the sides with like, you know, brackets where you have to hit shift, I'm not as, uh, not as well versed there with my speed. All right, so far so good. Let's go to the next page. Now we're going to talk about divs, divs, dividers. One of the most popular elements in HTML is the div element. Uh, div is short for division, not divider, excuse me. Um, but it means the same thing, or a container that divides the page into sections. These sections are very useful for grouping elements in your HTML together. Um, why use divs? It's great for grouping elements. Divs don't inherently have a visual representation, but they are very useful when they want to apply custom style to our elements. Divs allow us to group HTML elements to apply the same style for all HTML elements inside. We can also style the div element as a whole. You can see how this can be done in the Learn CSS course. Um, divs can also contain any text or other HTML elements, such as links, images, or videos. Remember, always add spaces to space of indentation when you nest elements inside of div for better re readability. So, below the H1 heading that says the brown bear, add an opening div tag. tag. Place the closing div tag after the H3 element that says features. Okay, so, below the heading, let's add a div tag. We're going to put that in there. And uh, place the closing tag after the H3 element that says features, which is right here. So, we're going to go here and we're going to close it. Uh, and we're going to close it. And hit run. Okay. Um, remember to use your spacebar to add two spaces of indentation when you nest elements. Um, I guess since we're nesting this inside of the div tag, let's add two spaces. I want to make sure that we get it correctly, so I'm going to add these two here so that it's a little easier to read. That way we know that the div tag is the child of body and the h2 and h3 tags here are the child of div and the grandchildren of the body so it makes sense there's a structure there above the h2 element that says habitat add an opening div tag so we're going to go here where it says habitat and we're going to add an opening div tag and obviously now we're going to indent this two spaces um, and close the div tag after the h3 element that says countries with small brown bears so that's over here so we're going to close that here and uh, we're going to indent these two tags over here as well these two elements and we're going to hit run boom simple 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 stuff so it looks good so far above the h2 element that says media add an opening div tag so that's going to be over here so you can see we're splitting these three sections you can see how this page is you can see the logic of what this page is going to look like right um and then we're going to close it you can see that this page is being split into three sections effectively it's about uh, looks like my session team timed out okay we're good uh, let me run this real quick looks like it's good um you can see it's going to be split into uh, um, about the brown bear the habitat and then extra sources like media pictures and videos and such so um yeah we're good I'm just making sure their code wasn't erased that the, the uh, connection is a little bit wonky but let's uh reset this code so next we're going to talk about the attributes um if you want to expand an elements tag we can do so using an attribute and this is important and you'll see why later on but Attributes are content added to the opening tag of an element, and it can be used in several ways, from providing information to changing styling. Um, attributes are made up of the following two parts, the name of the attribute and the value of the attribute. One commonly used attribute is the ID. We can use the ID attribute to specify uh, different content, such as the divs, and it's really helpful when you use an element more than once. IDs have several different purposes in HTML, but for now, we'll focus on how they can help us identify content on our page. Um, so, when we add an ID to a div, we place it in the opening tag. 
So it looks something like this, right? So now they want us to add an ID attribute with the value introduction to the div tag that's below the brown bear h1 heading. So what we're going to do is below, it's below the brown bear over here. And so we're going to basically take this out. We're going to add ID equals and we're going to put introduction like so. Um, and then we're going to do it like this. Excuse me. Um, and that should be correct if I'm not mistaken based on the way that this looks. Let's see here. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Add an ID attribute with the value habitat to the opening div tag that has uh, the habitat h2 heading as a child. So um, we're going to go here to habitat with the value habitat. So that's going to be, do, 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 do. I think it's going to be right here. And we're going to basically go uh, ID equals habitat. And uh, then we're just going to go like that. And I think that should be good. Okay, so that's the third. And next we're going to do basically the same thing for media. So we're going to go here. We're going to put ID equals media. And we're going to add this little bracket to connect it. And we're going to hit run and check the code here. And as you can see so far, nothing has changed here. And um, that's because this just serves as an identifier for our, our purposes. And we're going to use this ID for later. And you'll see why. So next page here. Um, let me uh, reset the code here so that we can work on this. If you want to display text in uh, HTML, you can use a paragraph or span. Um, paragraphs contain a block of plain text. Span contains short pieces of text or other HTML. They are used to separate small pieces of content that are, that are on the same line as other content. Take a look at each of these elements in the action in action below. So, as you can see, span is just encompassing self-driving cars. Um, and then we have the rest of the sentence here. So you can use this if you want to, let's say, bold this specific part or, or do something specific to it, you know, whatever it is. You can separate this like that. In the example above, there are two different divs. Um, the second div contains a P uh, element with a P tag with span self-driving cars. This span element separates self-driving cars from the rest of the text in the paragraph. It's best to use a span element when you want to either target a specific piece of content that is in line or on the same line as other text. If you want to divide your content into blocks, it's better to use a div. So below the H2 element that says about brown bears, which is right here, add a opening and closing tag and inside of the tags put the following text so we're going to go here we're going to put the p and we're going to indent it two spaces so one two this is to again show the visual visualization that this is the child of this and this is related directly to this not to this not to this not to this not to this it's directly related to this as a visualization uh, well i guess this is the grandchild of div and the great grandchild of body, but the point is it's directly related to about brown bears. So we're gonna take this text here, we're just gonna copy it so I don't have to type all of it out. We're gonna paste it and then we are going to close it out like so. And then we're gonna hit run. And as you can see, it's our page is coming along nicely so far. Um below the H3 element that says features add another paragraph uh, with the following text. And so we're gonna do the same exact thing here, two spaces to signify that uh, it's related to features. Um, and this is important because when I was first learning HTML on my own, I had no idea what indentation was for and I was just indenting everything and it just looked like uh, it was basically going this way with indentation, it looked weird. And that is not the right practice, so. That there, we're gonna close the paragraph element out and we're gonna hit run. And so you can see now we have the features now. Under the 
H tree element that says countries with small brown bear populations at a paragraph with the following text. Um, so small brown bear populations, right? Yeah, okay. Just wanted to make sure that I didn't get it incorrect. One, two, and then paragraph. And then we're just gonna also close it out instead as quickly as possible here. And let's copy this. All right, and let's paste it inside and let's hit run. All right, so far so good. I'm actually impressed by the way that I have not messed up a single thing thus far. You know, because I'm like when you record these videos, by the way, sometimes it's hard to focus on the video, my presentation, my whispering, and the content of the video when it's like informational like this. Some of my fact videos I've spaced out while reading. Um, so I'm, I'm impressed I haven't made a single mistake thus far. I hope I don't jinx it now. Anywho, um, styling text. You can also style text using HTML tags. The EM tag emphasizes text while the strong tag highlights important text. Later, when you begin to style websites, you will decide how you want browsers to display content within EM and strong tags. Uh, browsers, however, have built-in style sheets that will generally style these tags in the following ways. The EM tag will generally render as italic emphasis, and the strong tag will generally render as bold emphasis. Uh, take a look at each style in action. So, this is going to make the river bold, and this is going to make this italics, basically. Um, the Nile River, here we have the Nile River bold, and then we have longest is going to be uh, italicized, as we see here. In the first paragraph that starts with the brown bear, emphasize Urso's Arctos using the EM tag. So, yeah, let's find it here in the, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? You know, you would think that they would make a little bit more of a, um, I guess we have to do it within the, the brackets, I think, right? So let's do it like this. They would make it less complicated in terms of the words. I don't know if it has to be this whole thing, but let's see. Run. Wow, it does. That's my mistake. I messed that up. I think we have to. There we go. No, I did it correctly. Sometimes you can make little mistakes like that. I jinxed it. I told you. I told you it was going to happen. <laughs> I totally jinxed myself. Um, in the next, uh, in the paragraph under about brown bears, make the words least concern strong using the strong tag. So let's go to, or is it least concern? about brown bears least concern least concern here it is strong so we're just gonna go here and put strong and we're gonna do the same thing here and we're gonna put strong simple run um and you can see it's being uh displayed here as well so next let me reset this um the line spacing between code and HTML file doesn't affect the positioning of the elements in the browser. If you are interested in modifying the spacing in the browser, you can use HTML's line break element, BR. The line break element is, used, uh, is unique because it is only composed of a starting tag. You can use it anywhere within your HTML code and a line break will be shown in the browser. Um, add two line breaks after the sentence that ends with least concern so so all we're going to do here is we're going to go here after here and we're just going to put br and we're going to put br one more time and that's going to give us two line breaks here and we're going to run it and you can see that it gave us two spaces here i guess in a way you could also do this right to visualize it if you wanted to um, to make it more, uh, you know, to visualize it in the HTML as well. And nothing's going to change here, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I would probably do that as well, but, you know, you could probably do something like this. You know, I don't know if this is a proper way to do it, but I think this would make it more visually uh, represented in the HTML. Next. So, now we have unordered lists. Um, in addition to organizing text in paragraph form, you can also display content in an easy-to-read list. 
In HTML, you can use an unordered list tag UL to create a list of items in no particular order. An unordered list outlines individual list items with a bullet point. The UL element should not hold raw text and won't automatically, uh, and this is important, format raw text into an unordered list of items. Individual list items must be added to the unordered list using the list tag li. Uh, the li or list item tag is used to describe an item in a list. So as you can see, we have an unordered list element, and then we have limes, tortillas, and chicken, and they're all listed um, within their respective tags. In the example above, the list was created using the UL tag, and all the individual list items were added using the LI tags. The output will look like this. Boom, boom, boom. Simple. So, under the heading that says species, create an unordered list. Um, don't add any items just yet. So, under the heading that says species, where is that? It's over here. Okay. And again, we're going to go one, two, add two spaces, and we're going to put unordered list here. Um, boom. And we're going to go here and close it out just to get ahead of the game there. Boom. Okay. So, now we're going to add the following list items to this. And uh, once again, we're going to go one, two, and we're going to do it like this so that it's visualized as you can see just the same way right so you can see the relationship here this is a child of h3 and this is a child of the ul and this is a grandchild of h3 so you can see the relationship visually uh and it, it kind of just helps helps um make sense of everything that you're reading i think at least it does for me i learned a lot just by nesting it helps me remember it better what am i doing not limes uh arctos Arctos, uh, then we've got, and you know, you can copy and paste the code, but uh, for me, it, I find, right, typing it helps me remember better. Um, and then we're gonna do, Hori, what the fuck, what is this? Hori, Billis, Jesus Christ, okay. <laughs> then we're gonna do, uh, Nelsoni and Extinct in the, the brackets. So making it extra complicated for us um, for some reason. And then we're going to click run. And here we have it. So as you can see here, boom, everything is perfectly listed. So we've got a very basic web page so far. Um, and it's looking, it's looking pretty good for something that would exist in the 90s maybe. But, you know, we're learning. We're learning. Now we're going to do ordered lists. Basically the same uh, sort of process just we're using a different uh, tag here. So instead of UL, we're using OL. Um, you can create the ordered list with the OL tag and then add individual list items to the list using the LI tags like we did before. So um, let's do it. Under the heading that says countries with large brown bear populations, add an ordered list. Do not add, do not add any list items to the list just yet. Okay, so I think there's a fire truck coming, so give me one second, please. I think it's gone. Okay, anyway. Um, countries with large brown bears, where is it? Uh, do, 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 here it is. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Oh, sorry. Let me re uh, reset this. Do, 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 do. Okay, countries with large brown bears populations right here. So, one, two, and then we're going to add UL, or OL, rather. Um, and we're going to close it. And uh, then we're going to go up here and add a list item here. And we're going to put, uh, oh, do not list any items just yet. I'm a little bit ahead of the mark. All right, let me hit run really quick. Thank you. And now we're going to add the following items. Russia. Uh, close. And then we're going to add uh, United States. So, like so. And then we're going to add uh, Canada. My birthplace. And I made a mistake over here, by the way. Let me uh, quickly fix that over here. Boom. Done. And let me hit run. And as you can see, here we are. We've got it listed like this. Difference from here, as you can see, just by changing the um, the tag. Now, we 
are going to reset the code here on the next page, on page 13. And we're going to add some images to make, to, you know, to spice this page up a bit. It's kind of bland looking, so we want to add some images. Um, the image tag allows you to add an image to a web page. Most elements require both opening and closing tags, but the image tag is a self-closing tag. Note that the image tag has a forward slash. Self-closing tags may include or omit the final slash. Both will render properly. So as you can see, we have image SRC, which stands for source, uh, and then the image location uh, URL symbol. Um, the image tag has a required attribute called SRC. The circ attribute must be set to the image's source or the location of the image. In this case, the value of the SRC must be uniform resource locator or URL um, of the image. So here we go. Under the media uh, heading, add an image. Use the following URLs to source. So let's go down to uh, media and let's add uh, the source here. So basically, what we have to do is just put the image tag here, src equals, and then we're going to put the URL over here and just copy it into here, and we are going to close it. I like to use the brackets just out of practice, and then we're going to click run. Um, boom. And as you can see, my webcam is blocking it a little bit, but we have a nice little cute pair here. Let me show you real quick. So let me move me over. As you can see, I've got a bear right there, looking very cute, looking very cuddly. Uh, you know, hello bear. He looks very cute. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the next page. We're almost done. Um, now let me reset the code here. Now we're gonna do uh, image alts. It's this is very basic. It's just text. Uh, this is used. Um, well, let me just read what they say. Part of being an exceptional web developer is making your site accessible to users of all backgrounds in order to make the web more inclusive. So we need to consider what happens when assistive technologies such as screen readers come across image tags. The alt attribute, which stands for alternative text, brings meaning to the images on our sites. The alt attribute can be added to the image tag just like the circ attribute. The value of the alt should be a description of the image. So. Basically, you just add the alt tag here and you add a little description so that if the image doesn't render properly, this text will pop up instead. Or as they mentioned, if the user is visually impaired or not visually impaired, but uh, um, if they are um, not able to, uh, um, yeah, I guess if they're visually impaired, the text will be displayed using um, you know, some sort of technology. I'm not really sure how it will work, but I, under I understand that that's how it works for visually impaired people using the internet. But anyway, um, if an image fails to load on a web page, a user can mouse over the area originally intended for the image and read a brief description of the image. This is made possible by the description you provide in the alt attribute. Okay, here we go. Visually impaired users often browse the web with the aid of screen reading software. When you include the alt attribute, the screen reading software can read the images descriptions out loud. Okay, that makes sense. To the visually impaired user, perfect. Okay. Um, the alt attribute also plays a role in search engine optimization, otherwise known as SEO. I used to work in this uh, area of marketing too before I transferred to email. Um, because search engines cannot see the images on websites as they crawl the internet, having descriptive alt attributes can improve the ranking of your site. Um, and yeah, I would say when I worked in email, uh, in uh, SEO, this was the main reason for the alt tag is to, to increase our rankings in search engines. Um, so there's multiple purposes for it. Uh, of course, you can not do it if you want, and it'll be fine. That Everything will display just as is, but it's a good practice to use alt attributes if you can. So um, add the alt attribute to the image and include description. Make sure the description accurately describes, accurately describes the image. So uh, let's go down to here, um, and let's add the alt text, shall we? So we're going to go here, simple alt equals, and we're going to put, um, you know, cute brown bear that's my description you know i'm just saying i think that makes sense to me <laughs> and we're gonna click run um and there we go nothing changes but 
the image now has a description. So next. Now we're going to, uh, in addition to this, add a video to this page. So um, as you can see, I already did it. So let me reset it. And I will move my webcam so you can see the final product. Don't worry. Um, in addition to the images, HTML also supports displaying videos. Like the image tag, the video tag requires a circ attribute with a link to the video source. Unlike the image tag, however, the video element requires an opening and a closing tag. And you can see an example right here. Um, in this example, the video source, circ is my video then before. The source can be a video file that is hosted along your web page or a URL that points to a video file hosted on another web page, maybe YouTube or something. Um, after the circ attribute, width and height attributes are used to set the size of the video displayed in the browser. Very important. Uh, the controls attribute instructs the browser to include basic video controls like pause, play, and skip. The text video not supported between the opening and closing video tags will only be displayed if the browser is unable to load the video. So, under the image, uh, create a video tag and add the following video URL as the source. So, we're going to go here. Let me get this out of my way. So, we've got the image tag here. And it is saying under it, let's add the video. So, I'm going to add uh, SRC equals and we're going to put the URL from here. Uh, this is going to be a URL of a bear being very cute and such. And then we are also going to add the um, width here. So make sure that it's displayed properly and the height. So um, we we'll want to make sure it is. Uh, well, they're not really telling me to do that just yet, but I'm going to do it ahead of time. I think it'll be fine. And then controls, excuse me, controls, and then we're going to close that out. And then we're going to put video not supported, and then we're going to close this out. Boom. I think that should be good. Let's run it. All right, perfect. And as you can see here, let me move my webcam. Now we have a video of a bear being very cute, just chilling in an open field. He's gonna like wash himself now. Very adorable, very cute, very wholesome. Um, I don't think it has any sound, but uh, we don't need sound because he's adorable. Look at him, not gonna smash. Um, okay, let me put me back over here. Um, so now, uh, they said to define the width, which I already did. That's important because it's going to set, um, you know, set the, uh, how it looks on the web page. Otherwise, it might be too big, or we can kind of test that out here, right? By just deleting this right here and running it to see what happens. Nothing really changes. Well, that's okay then. Okay. We're going to paste it back and we're going to run it. Boom. Um, and uh, I believe we are done with this uh, exercise, I think. Let's go to the next page. We are done, guys. So, as a review, let's review what we've learned so far. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and is used to create the structure and content of a web page. Most HTML elements contain opening and closing tags with raw text or other HTML tags between them. HTML, HTML elements can be nested inside other elements. Uh, the enclosed element is the child of the enclosing parent element. Any visible content should be placed within the opening and closing body tags. Heading and subheadings H1 to H6 tags are used to enlarge text. P, span, and div tags specify text or blocks. The EM and strong tags are used to emphasize text. The line breaks are created with the BR tag. Ordered lists are numbered and unordered lists are bulleted. An image and video can be added by linking to existing source. Um, and that's basically it for this first uh, chapter. Let me show you guys what it looks like here. This is it right here. Um, and if you wanted to, you could basically copy this code and open it in a web browser. So um, you'd have to copy it to a clipboard, open it in a uh, document, and then you can open it in a web browser. 
but this is it what it would look like right here as you can see uh, a nice web page very basic but you know once you learn uh, once you learn CSS you can start to spice things up um, and make it really really uh, fancy so guys for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it i apologize if there's any noise in the background it is uh 4 p.m and there's a lot of cars going back and forth but nonetheless i hope that you found it very very relaxing very informational and if not boring enough to fall asleep to so thank you for watching this video my friends and i will see you in the next video take care bye for now